فهم الإيماني للحق والعدل التواصي بالجمال Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Continuing with our discussion on social justice. Now, for this particular segment, we discuss Islam's role and regulations with, in reference to persons with disabilities. Recently in the world, there has been a growth in public awareness and sensitivity towards those with physical and mental disabilities. Historically, those with disabilities were often stigmatized and marginalized. However, the opposite, the contrary, is viewed in Islamic society. Some of the greatest legacies were established by famous individuals with disabilities and impediments, uh, which established an important precedent of respect and dignity for all. If you were to look at the prophetic time, the time of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, now one of the most illustrious companions of the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiyallahu anhu, a man who also happened to be fully blind. He holds a very unique distinction in Islam, being one of two people assigned by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to perform the daily calls to prayer, and the other being the aforementioned and the famous Bilal ibn Rabah radiyallahu anhu. On one occasion, in the early period of Islam, when the Prophet ﷺ was preaching and talking about the teachings of Islam to the chiefs of Makkah, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum came to him, seemingly interrupted the gathering with the request, which caused the Prophet ﷺ to frown momentarily. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala noticed the show of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam not wanting to give Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum full attention. Even the slight expression was considered a lapse in judgment and the opening verses of, uh, of the 80th chapter of the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim abasa wa tawalla are in reference to this, counseling Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and reminding him that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who will benefit the most from hearing the message. Now from the story, we can also derive that the importance of ensuring those with disabilities are welcomed at all gatherings, provided equal and equitable access to education, and educational opportunities and are not discriminated against in any manner when it comes to their worldly needs as well as the needs of the hereafter. One of the famous reciters of the Quran, Isa al-Zarqi, better known as Imam Qalun, rahmatullah he was a leading reciter in the city of Medina in his lifetime. His style of recitation is in fact the norm today in Qatar, Libya, Tunisia, many parts of North Africa. And a lesser known fact about Imam Qalun, however, was that he was in fact deaf and yet was able to master the art of recitation and all its subtle phonetic nuances and pronunciations. And it is said that he learned it through lip reading and he was able to correct his students through the same method. Alhamdulillah. In addition to physical disabilities, Islam provided a precedence for treating with dignity and compassion those with what we term today as mentally challenged and those who have got learning deficiencies. On one occasion, a woman with an unspecified condition, for remember, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it wasn't a period and an era of diagnosis. But it was obvious that the individual had some challenges. So on one occasion, a woman with such a condition that affected her uh, cognition, affected her mental ability, approached the Prophet ﷺ to request for assistance. Nabi ﷺ immediately prioritized her request. He addressed her with a customary, customary title of honor which signifies both respect and comfort and asked her to select any public place in the city at her convenience so that he could arrange to meet her and assist her. 
When he met with her, he patiently stood with her at the roadside until her requests were all seen to and satisfied. Now this story is particularly significant and authoritative for Muslims because the Prophet wasallam, the Nabi of Allah, presents the moral example to constitute the basis of Islam, Islamic ethical framework. No framework would be considered as relevant in Islam unless it is drawn from the framework shown to us by Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thus, this specific incident can be used by Muslims to derive many lessons. For instance, it demonstrates that it is an Islamic goal to ensure that mental health counseling and services are available. And this would not only apply to a person with a recognized condition, but also counseling by the way of comforting people whose mental judgment may be clouded because of circumstances, because of grief, because of issues like financial, marital, etc., that such type of compassionate counseling be extended unto them so that they may once again live normal functional lives and they may once again become hopeful of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saving themselves from all form of despondency through the intervention that the ummah has now shown to them. Thus, it demonstrates an Islamic goal to ensure that counseling services are available and that such services be arranged according to the terms of those who utilize them, that the time be adequate, the time frame be adequate, uh, the counselor seeing to them be properly trained and at the same time that every possible need and which is a practical uh, need be attended to. It demonstrates the importance of also creating a safe space where people are not stigmatized because of physical impediments, because of mental uh, retardation or the lack of mental development, but rather addressed with terms of respect and equal dignity so that they feel comfortable accessing the needs in public and every space occupied by the Muslims remains a space of comfort for everybody. It is these type of services that historically have proven as an important tool of da'wah and a tool of retaining the Muslim ummah and Muslim community. Then where people saw that here you have a community that is behaving in contrary to the norm of the day, where people who are physically challenged are stigmatized or mentally challenged are ostracized. And Islam behaved in exactly the opposite way because it is the de teachings of deed. Thus it became a very important part of the da'wah in antiquity in early Islam that people who needed these services or appreciated these services were drawn to the light of Islam and ultimately at the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guider to the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. <laughs> في يدي رسالة 